we are now going to practice a small tutorial on the compressor section based on the detailed understanding that we have gathered together right and uh, this will include some detailed section on velocity triangles also where one theoretical question we will practice apart from the numerical questions so the question one of the tutorial is actually about centrifugal compressors to test you whether you have remembered and understood the theory correctly the question is maximum operating flow rate through centrifugal compressor at a given rpm yes, this is one of the gate questions limited Now, it is talking about stall of impeller blade, right? Any compressor which may be axial or centrifugal is always going to have some operating flow rate, M dot, right? And this question at any point may come like this. You should not be surprised. That's the whole the reason why I'm bringing this question and giving the theoretical understanding, right? This motion may be centrifugally directing the streamlines like this or may be axial the whole point about m dot which is rho a v right is that a stall in impeller blade what will it do a stall in impeller blade would cause these impeller blades here to not transmit the energy not to transmit the energy to the fluid so in that stall region the delta v imparted would go down the compressibility will be reduced so mass flow rate will come down but is it maximum does it govern maximum stall happens at some percentage of blade not entire blade can stall right we have seen these angles it's twisted even if it is stalled at most of the sections some sections will never stop obviously not if you understand the centrifugal compressor surge Obviously not. Inlet flow distortion. This is the blade, may it be of axial or centrifugal. The flow is getting and directed at certain angle, theta or beta. Distortion would cause certain non-optimum energy transfer. But again, this is not the driver. Distorted flow would produce lower specific work, but not minimum operating condition. Because at a given RPM, most important, this distortion would reduce it, not significant. Moment M diffuser becomes one, no matter how great optimization you do on these and this you cannot move anything further because of the compression diffusion choking you cannot do more mass flow very very important concept which you should be extremely clear about so this tells me that the operating mass flow rate is governed by the 
throat design of the diffuser and that is the most important implication for a blade design person okay that's question number one we will now go to question number two a jet engine is operating at a Mach number 0.8 at altitude 10 kilometers okay Efficiency of the intake, eta intake is 0.8 and eta compressor is 0.87. So this is given. So some guy has done already the complicated cycle analysis and has provided us these numbers. Total temperature at the exit of air inlet and compressor would be and we have been given P infinity 2603 kPa at 10 kilometers, T infinity 223 Kelvin, gamma 1.4, rho and pi RC and pi is 8. So some guy has designed the blades going through the theory of how the blade stalls surge and so on with these numbers. He has also given us the efficiencies as measured. Now, first and foremost, T01 at diffuser is assumed through isentropic flow equations of engine analysis. Diffuser and isentropic flow would slow down the flow with this clear. So if I substitute the numbers point two times point eight, right? One point four minus one is point four by two is point two. 0.8 square is 0.64 times T infinity which is 223 we have already taken it here right? so this is 1.128 on multiplication you would get this 251 Kelvin this is the diffuser exit and inlet of the compressor. There is hardly a loss in between. The staging is assumed to be smooth. So we got one answer. Now, in the compressor, what is the relation? T03 upon T01 is equal to 1 plus 1 upon eta C pi C raised to gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1. How did I arrive at this relation? Let me write one step behind. Pi C raised to gamma minus 1. This is T03 dash upon T01 minus 1. Which means right? But this is what we know. See what I have done? I have for you re-walked all the steps of eta C pi C relation from engine. So that you are very clear. How is the efficiency defined? Right? I have walked you through how the efficiency is defined. Which means based on this relation I will substitute and get T03 as T01 1 plus pi C raised to gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1 upon eta C now I can substitute 251 where did this appear in T01 right I made eta into m square the efficiency part 
That's why I was getting the lower number. Otherwise, I would have got isentropic flow. What is pi c? 8 raised to 0 0.4, which is 2 by 7 minus 1 upon 0.87. You can very quickly substitute this in your scientific calculator to get 486 Kelvin. Now see the rise in temperature. That is important to analyze. Compressors for pi 8 is giving you tau of about 2. Which means higher the compression, more will be temperature rise. Now this 400 Kelvin flow, hot flow is going to enter my combustion chamber. Fuel is added. Turbine is rotated through this. Nozzle expands. And that's how the components match. As an undergraduate student of propulsion, you should have these concepts very, very clear in your head. How each of the component talks to other component. Okay? Question number three. Air at a stagnation temperature of 15 degrees Celsius and stagnation pressure of 100 kilopascal enters an axial compressor with absolute velocity of 120 meter per second. I already know this. They have given me 15 degrees Celsius as stagnation and stagnation pressure as 100 which means if I reduce everything to 0. Okay. C what is C1? 120 meter per second. Absolute, right? Absolute frame of reference. Inlet guide vanes directed to the rotor at angle 18 degree. Immediately I should write, translate the information like this. So there is an inlet guide vane which directs it. Right? Rotor turning angle is 27 degree and rotor blade speed is 200 meter per second mean we have seen this is going to change from root to tip hub to tip it is varying so it is an average that we take remember our diffuser efficiency d because of this and remember our work done factor lambda because of omega r r being root to tip different that's why mean is coming. See how things relate. Axial velocity is assumed to be constant. Undergraduate assumption again. Fair enough assumption. If mass flow rate is 1 kg per second, the power required to drive the compressor is. This is one of the gate questions. So we have been asked power requirement. Work done or power is m dot into u into c theta 2 minus c theta 1. Immediately I wrote this formula. How? Momentum change into rotational speed. Do I have this? Yes. Do I have this? Yes. What don't I have? This, which means I need to find this. Now, absolute component is given. I also know that this c theta 2 minus c theta 1 can be written as cz tan beta 1 minus tan beta 2. I also know I also know phi which is beta 2 minus beta 1 is 28 degrees. It is rotating the flow through this relative angle. What is Cz? C cos alpha cos of 18 degree. So this is 120 into cos of 18 degree. If you do this on your calculators, you would get this as 114.2 meter per second. So I know the angular velocity Cz. Now the turning angle is 28, right? 
beta 1 is 55 what would be beta 2 28 degrees Celsius right I'm sorry I'm so sorry this is how the mathematical arithmetic errors may happen we have been given the turning angle with respect to the blade the design of 27 which means beta 1 minus beta 2 is 27 given the beta 1 your beta 2 is 28 so since the information provided to you tells me the beta 1s and beta 2s I can now substitute this like this into 200 into 1 right m dot u cz tan beta 1 minus tan beta 2 this you get as 20.46 kilowatt so this particular compressor would require 20 and a half kilowatt power to be extracted from turbine to do these operations the next part of this question which they had asked was given this power information okay given this power information and assuming eta of 1 impossible but theoretically find out the pi c now such a question you should never get confused as to what did I learn what did I forget this you have to attempt it very very calmly we know that eta c and pi c are related in a very very simple way what is the relation pi c is 1 plus eta c u c z upon c p t 0 1 tan beta 1 minus tan beta 2 whole raised to gamma by gamma minus 1 right air is given 1.4 we can assume safely T01 is given to 73 plus 15 288 CP of air is 1004 right 1 point something this is 1 which means this is 200 into 114.25 right we have already computed this number in terms of kilowatt right so whole thing you have to do is substitute it here 20.46 into 10 raised to 3 if you forget cp how would you do gamma r by gamma minus 1 1.4 1 by 0.4 which is 7 by 2 into 288 approximately the constant right or 300 so this becomes around 1005 into 288 this to <coughs> sorry <coughs> sorry <coughs> excuse me. now this is a simplification game to give you ballpark range this is about 0.1 so this becomes 1.1 raised to 3 and a half this would approximately give you 6 which means for this given compressor with these parameters and this turning angle the compression ratio achieved P03 to P01 is 6 and so P03 you would get at stagnation is 600 kp that was the another question okay so this is a very close question it's an extremely close question as we say right question number five the inlet stagnation temperature of a single axial compressor is 300 kelvin what does single mean only one stage rotor center undergraduate simplification series of blades are not considered so T01 is 300. Stage efficiency is 0.8. Blade speed is 200. 
meter per second. Axial flow velocity is 160 meter per second. Inlet relative blade angle is 44. Outlet relative blade angle is 40. So we have been provided ample information. CP 1005, gamma 1.4. What is the pi c? This is just the extension of the previous question by the way. And this was in one of the another gate exam. So this is one of the favorite topics to ask. Now, what is T03 minus T01? U Cz tan beta 1 minus tan beta 2. This is Cz axial upon Cp. Therefore, if you substitute this, what will be the delta T? 22.8. That means what is T03? 322.8 Kelvin. You just have to substitute these numbers. 200 into 160 upon 1005 tan of 44 minus tan of T. And that is not equal to tan of 30. Please don't make that arithmetic error. Now, pi C is related with how? 1 plus eta c t03 minus t01 upon t01 right this minus 1 raised to gamma by gamma minus 1 so this is 22.8 upon 300 eta c is 0.8 if you now substitute this you would get 1.23 so the pressure ratio achieved is 1.23. You may feel this is very very low and your observation is very correct. Now we have to guess ourselves why. This is not asked in any questions but this is your own introspection to get more flavor. We said blade speed is 200 meter per second which is quite high. It's a decent enough velocity right. If typical radius is say 0.1 meter omega is 200 rad per second right how do you convert rad per second into rpm pi radians is one rotation so 200 radians is x rotation so 200 upon pi into 60 rpm right this you can simplify so it's about 4000 rpm 10 centimeter radius which is typically the blade height right 10 centimeters which means the speed is very very high it is single stator rotor combination that makes the difference the CZ that you saw was 160 very high at gel velocity so just by having one stage is not enough. These 22, 22 have to build up to give you 200 to 300 degrees Celsius rise to get sensible pi c. Right? Now you get the importance of spooling. Now you get the importance of multi stage. This question introspectively will tell you this answer. As an undergraduate student, please build this appetite to see beyond the numbers. Very important. Sixth question, for a multi-stage axial compressor with constant hub diameter, so multi-stage axial compressor, our hub is constant. What does that mean? They had seen one picture here, right? I'm just exaggerating. Where hub radius was increasing as you moved downstream. Now we are saying that is not the case. Hub radius is constant. What would happen? Blade height decreases in flow direction. Blade height increases in flow direction. Remains constant. Or first increases. Then 
decreases. And this is again one of the very, very important gate questions. If you remember my lecture, we had said you make hub progressively going up and the clearance between hub and tip smaller, smaller, smaller because as the pressure keeps building up, density moving up, rho a v, v is almost similar, relative velocity is not changing much, area has to constrain to maintain the mass flow. Mass flow rate within the stage cannot change, right? m dot is conserved, m dot here before just at the beginning of compression is where the full compression has achieved. But look at the density change. So you have to reduce the area. Now hub is constant. Only ways, only ways decreasing. If you keep increasing, more work will be imparted. More work means more density. More density means more mass flow. This is abrupt. Why? W by M dot cannot change sign. Transfer of work has to be smooth and continuous because this is directionally asymmetric. See the mathematical reasoning. So increasing decreasing function will not satisfy just case. It has to be monotonous function. Right? That's the reasoning I'm doing. Physically, I cannot keep adding some energy and then removing some energy relatively. I have to always incrementally add some energy or increment should be zero. I cannot start removing the energy from the fluid. Moment this happens, to balance the mass flow, you will have to really extract the energy. Now you cannot have half blades rotating in positive direction and half in negative, right? Whole point of compressor is gone. So this question tests your theory of agile compressors and velocity diagrams. The last question of this tutorial is going to be now on something interesting. Okay, So let's practice the last question. And I'm trying to find a great question. Okay. Question number seven is very, very good. If no IGV are present in compressor, can it be used as turbine as well? IGV is a very peculiar property that we saw only in compressor never in turbine. Why? The fluid which came out of combustion chamber rotated in the velocity diagram the turbine first. So rotational blades were directly rotated in compressor not in turbine. Turbine had diffuser to reduce their energy before they can face a rotating component. Inlet guide vanes are used in compressor because the diffuser section which is providing you diffused flow in the reduced velocity has to guide to the blade angle. That's why IGVs are important. Alpha 1 not equal to 0 is the criterion we are using. If there are no IGVs, you would see rotor, stator, rotor, stator combination. If I flip and go on the other side, what do I see? Stator, rotor, stator, rotor, stator, rotor. If the design is with the constant hub radius, answer is yes. Rotate the flow direction. Just reverse it. Theoretically, nothing from fluids engineering or Propulsion engineering stops you from doing this. If IGVs are not present, 
this acts as a compressor and compresses the flow or this acts as a turbine and expands the flow importing energy compressing it extracting energy expanding it mechanically there are of course a set of challenge something called as turbine compressor matching through spools the hub radius which increases here would not allow your turbines in a small concentrated zone to operate with such a high temperature so material science guy there and mechanical engineer guy there will not let you do but propulsion engineering can let you do so this is a very very good question to understand the nitty gritties of actual compressor this closes our tutorial on actual compressors based on the velocity triangle diagrams and the theoretical understanding of compressors thank you